Hey, Mark. Hey, Mr. J. So I know doing all this merch marketing, like these three awesome death battle t-shirts, can get kind of stressful. So we added some new office amenities that I think will help take the edge off, like the new office jacuzzi. Gee, no thanks. You ever smelled a wet sloth before? All right, maybe a relaxing massage then. Me, yeah, I got a fair hands. All right, how about a nice hot sauna? It's a fucking toast oven, Chad. I'm Mark Slothman, and now I got the sexiest shirt in the market, Death Battle Shirts. You wear this, you're gonna find yourself in a sex battle. I don't know what that is, but I know you'll love it, okay? Now click the link below and buy this shirt, or they're gonna eat me. In ancient times, the Greeks believed everything to be made of four elements. Earth air, water, and the most difficult to control, fire. But these two combatants have mastered the art of playing with fire. Not Su Dragneel, the dragon slayer mage of the fairy tale guild. And Portcus D. Ace, the feared pirate known as Fire Fist. He's whiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. The end. Almost. Fortunately, Natsu's older brother, Zeref, survived. Horrified by the violent fate of his family, Zeref desperately sought a way to revive Natsu. Eventually, he discovered the connections between life, death, and magic, and became obsessed. And so he became the most evil and powerful mage ever, cursed to live forever and ruin everyone's lives. But everything worked out, I guess, because he brought Natsu back. Just one catch, Natsu had to be revived as a demon, though this gave him the potential to become even more powerful than Zeref. Unfortunately, Zeref had become incredibly dangerous to be around. Fearing for his brother's safety, he left Natsu in the care of his friend Igniel, who just so happened to be the Fire Dragon King. Natsu got adopted by a freaking dragon. Kinda weird since the dragon killed him in the first place and his family, but whatever. Dragon Dad ended up teaching little Natsu Dragon Slayer magic, a school of mystical martial arts developed specifically to kill dragons. Wait, man, it's really back and forth with these dragons, isn't it? Regardless, Igniel eagerly accepted his role as adoptive father. He taught Natsu how to read, write, and fight. But then when Natsu came of age, Igniel suddenly sent him through a time machine and poof! Before he knew it, Natsu was trapped 400 years in the future and abandoned by the only father figure he ever really knew. I know that feel, little buddy. I know that feel. Of course, it was all part of Igniel's plan to save the world, but at the time, Natsu didn't know that. Fortunately, it wasn't long before he found a new home and family among the mercenaries of the Fairy Tale Guild. Yeah, it turns out being a demon trained by a goddamn dragon made Natsu pretty effective as a bounty hunter. Natsu possesses superhuman speed, impressive strength, and unbelievable durability. He has superior senses such as sight and smell, along with a mastery of hand-to-hand -hand combat skills. Mix all that up with his fire dragon slayer magic and you got one fiery cocktail that'll knock just about anybody on their ass. As the name suggests, fire dragon slayer magic revolves around conjuring and manipulating fire. A prime example would be Natsu's signature move, the Fire Dragon's Roar. Where he literally shoots fire from his mouth. Or he can engulf his hand in flames for the devastating Fire Dragon's Iron Fist. You know, we're gonna be saying fire a lot this episode. Yep. Natsu has well over two dozen different ways to incorporate fire into his martial arts, but his real strength comes from a move nobody ever really expects. Uh, yeah. He eats fire. Like all mages in the fairy tale world, Natsu has a limited pool of magic, but consuming fire actually replenishes it. Not only that, he can consume a few different types of elemental magic as well, including lightning. Talk about a shocking appetite! And because this is anime, eating lightning gives Natsu access to an all new form, Lightning Fire Dragon. With this, Natsu's abilities are enhanced with electricity, giving him a brand new element of power. To increase his fire abilities, Natsu can enter Dragon Force. This greatly increases his Dragon Slayer magic and physical prowess, bringing Natsu closer to the strength of a full-grown dragon. He's even starting to look like a dragon now. You think that's like an awful dramatic reminder when he looks at himself? But when his Dragon Slayer abilities aren't enough, Natsu enters his strongest mode yet, 
Fire Dragon King mode. In this form, Natsu has access to techniques only the most powerful of dragons could wield, such as the Demolition Fist and the Fire Dragon King's Roar. At his strongest, he could wipe out exactly 973 soldiers all at once and create massive explosions so big they could wipe out a whole town. Natsu's raw power is extraordinary, both magically and physically. He's strong enough to lift an enormous stone slab several times larger than himself. Comparing this stone to Natsu's height and compensating for the density of the stone, it's likely this block weighs about 135 tons. Talk about never skipping arm day! He's also fast! He's fought in multiple battles where he's moved faster than the eye can see, putting him well over 9,000 miles per hour. And when fighting opponents even faster than him, Natsu has used his keen observational skills and indomitable willpower to predict their moves and defeat them. He's pretty clever in battle, which is surprising given how headstrong and stubborn he can be. Like any real fighter, Natsu prioritizes offense over defense, running in guns or, I guess, arms blazing. Except this impulsive approach to fighting often leaves massive amounts of collateral damage in his wake. Remember how we mentioned his firepower could wipe out a whole town? Well, sometimes that's not completely intentional. In fact, this hasty attitude may be his greatest weakness. Nah, his greatest weakness is how easily he gets motion sick. Put him on a moving car or boat and he'll be hurling in a matter of seconds. That flying cat following him around should start carrying vomit bags. Yeah, that's one of the stranger downsides of Dragon Slayer magic. Natsu's dragon-like senses can overload his semicircular canals, creating a feeling similar to vertigo. But more importantly, Natsu has a bad habit of burning through his available magic rather quickly. Yeah, but who cares? He can just chow down on some tasty flames or lightning to replenish his magic. Just one problem. Consuming any fire or lightning that Natsu has created himself will not replenish his reserves. Huh. Oh well, Natsu's still a badass. He really is the fairy tale guild's trump card for whenever things go south. And he continues to fulfill his old dragon dad's wish of making the world a safer place by setting it on fire. I think it's time we stop playing around. Let's get down to the real fight. I'm gonna shatter you into a million pieces. Wealth, fame, power. Gold D. Roger, the King of the Pirates, obtained this and everything else the world had to offer. And then he was brutally executed, leaving everyone to run off searching for the King's long lost treasure, the One Piece. However, unknown to most, Roger left behind an heir, albeit unborn. Terrified the Marines would execute Roger's son as well, the child's mother held her pregnancy for a total of 20 months. 20 months! Holy mother of hell! How does that even happen? Sheer inconceivable willpower. Though she died in childbirth, her last act was to give her newborn son his name, Porcus D. Ace. Soon after, Ace was adopted by an old acquaintance of his father, Monkey D. Garp, and raised alongside Monkey D. Luffy and his childhood friend, Sabo. Over time, Ace, Luffy, and Sabo grew very close, considering themselves brothers and together forging a lifelong pact. They would forever live life as free as possible. And for Ace, that meant following in his father's footsteps. It was the pirate's life for him. Ace was a natural on the sea, thanks to his incredible strength and combat aptitude. He quickly learned his way around the ocean, becoming the captain of his own ship in just a year's time, and eventually joining the ranks of the deadliest pirates around. He even claimed one of the world's most sought-after treasures, a devil fruit. In the One Piece world, if you eat yourself a devil fruit, you get yourself a superpower. In Ace's case, he ate the flame flame fruit, which, guess what? granted him the power to create and control fire. But with new power comes a buttload of badass new ways to kill people. Get this, this guy's gun hands are actually handguns. I mean, I guess that's accurate. That would be Ace's fire gun ability, and it's just one of many attacks that Flame Flame Fruit's power provides. Man, I love my gun leg and all, but now I think I really need me some gun hands to go along with it. Boomstick, sometimes I really really wonder about where you came from. The front door, like every day. Come on, Wiz, pay attention. Ugh, anyway, these fire abilities are what earned him the nickname Fire Fist Ace. Because he can turn his punches into blazing balls of red hot fire. Forget gun hands, give me some of that. Manipulating fire comes easy to Ace. He can conjure up enormous pillars of flame so intensely heated they can incinerate enemy projectiles, acting as a sort of fire shield. 
He's also got some really weird names for his attacks, like Firefly, Fiery Doll, and St. Elmo's Fire. Man, when did Elmo become a saint? <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, that's referencing weather phenomena, where plasma appears to discharge a top appointed object. Ace's version is not like that at all. Instead, he conjures up two javelins made of pure fire and hurdles them through enemies, burning them inside and out. Yeah, I'm gonna go with his version. Firefly and Fiery Doll is a combination attack, where he creates several small balls of green plasma which surround a foe before detonating in a massive series of explosions. He does have one attack with a really cool name, though. Oh, what's that? Crossfire, you get caught up in the crossfire, crossfire! Of course. However, Ace's most powerful attack is undoubtedly his great flame commandment, Flame Emperor. Which is a pretty big name for what is essentially a fiery spirit bomb. But good god, if you see that thing coming your way, don't even bother trying to run. You did. There's even more. See, the devil fruit Ace discovered was of a rare breed, a Logia fruit. Because of this, Ace also gained the ability to transform his entire body into fire. When he's in flame on mode, physical attacks pass right through him like he isn't even there. And if his fire body is somehow messed up, like someone dropping a giant candle snuffer on him, his true human body would be totally unaffected. Actually, since receiving this power, Ace has only been badly hurt by other Logia users wielding an element with an inherent advantage over fire, such as magma or water. Man, it's like he's invincible! In a way, but it's not an automatic defense. Ace must make the conscious decision to transform his body. But thanks to his blindingly quick reflexes, he's able to avoid almost any attack. He can even react quick enough to avoid a shot from a sniper. In this instance, he was reacting to the gunman in view. Assuming this gunman was professionally trained, Ace would have needed to react in about a quarter of a second. But who needs speed when your fire fist can blow apart five ships all at once? Considering ships like these would likely be constructed of teak wood, to accomplish this, Ace would need to hit each ship with at least 15,000 pounds of force per square inch. So getting hit by Ace would be like getting hit with a wrecking ball. And when he throws more fire into the mix, he can wipe out an entire town. Ace's last extraordinary quality actually has little to do with fire at all. If there's anything he inherited from his mother, it's his insane willpower and endurance. He once fought a karate fishman for five straight days. Man, with that endurance, he's gonna make some lucky lad or lady real happy someday. Or, I guess he would have if he didn't. Oh, hey, heads up. Huge spoiler warning in three, two, one. Yeah, he's dead. Like, totally dead. Like many Logia users, Ace grew cocky in his ability to avoid being hit. In fact, he practically forgot what pain even felt like. And so, despite all of Ace's fantastic feats, his most impressive was when, for once, he chose to take a hit, sacrificing himself to save his brother, Luffy. Damn, would you do that for me, Wiz? Hmm? Oh, oh sure, of course. You're a goddamn liar. I can't allow that. I'll take care of this on my own! All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, all this talk of chowing down on some scrumptious flames is making me hungry. Now, I'm a man who likes a good home-cooked meal, but going out to buy or hunt my own food is a hassle. If only there was some way food could be brought straight to me. Good news, Boomstick. Introducing Blue Apron, the number one fresh food delivery service in the country. Using only the freshest ingredients, Blue Apron delivers a kit of ready-to-cook meals straight to your door, along with easy-to-follow instructions. Plus, the ingredients are perfectly proportioned, so it cuts down on waste and you know you're using the right amount. On top of that, you can log into their website and select the upcoming meals that sound good to you. Like the crispy salmon and roasted potato salad with pickled mustard seeds and cream fraiche sauce. Plus, it does feel rewarding cooking new and exciting meals right in your own home. But don't just take our word for it. We want you to try it. Because you're watching Death Battle, you can get three meals free with free shipping by heading to blueapron.com forward slash battle. Seriously, you will love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. That's blueapron.com forward slash battle. But right now, it's time for our death battle! Hey you, thief, come back here! <laughs>
Give that back, or you'll have to deal with me. Nah. That's it. I'm gonna mess you up. Fight! Fire! Fire Dragon Sword Heart! Wait, are you seriously made of fire? Sunflare! Time to turn up the heat! Fire Dragon King's Roar! Fire Dragon King's Demolition Fist! Fire Fist! <sighs> Not bad, Hotshot. But you can't even touch me. Fire Blast! Oh, no. Fiery doll. Wait, are you seriously eating fire? Try eating this! Like I said, you can't touch me. I'm not trying to. Lightning Dragon Fire Mode! Lightning Fire Dragon Roar! Phew. All's well that ends well. <laughs> KO! Ew! That's a burn if I ever saw one. This battle was anything but clear-cut. Natsu held the advantage in speed and strength, and Ace trumped him in endurance and defense. Still, neither held an advantage so much that the other couldn't keep up. Both were mostly immune to each other's fire attacks. Because fire is Ace's only real weapon, this means he really didn't have anything that could kill Natsu. Natsu was definitely strong enough to put Ace down, but with Ace's intangible fire form, Natsu couldn't even touch him. So, sounds like a stalemate. Very nearly. Luckily for Natsu, he had an ace in the hole. Hey, thanks, one. Oh, thanks. Natsu has had far more combat training than Ace, and is known for using his superior senses to study his opponents and take advantage of their vulnerabilities. No matter what I try, this human just consumes my curses. He might even be stronger than he was when this fight started. When Ace realized Natsu could eat fire, he had to become more liberal with his true physical form to avoid being consumed. And this was what Natsu was counting on. Being faster than the eye can track, Natsu was more than quick enough to get a good hit in up close. A perfect opportunity to use a fast, deadly elemental weapon Ace's body wasn't immune to. Lightning. It's not like Natsu was gonna run out of magic or anything. I mean, there's freaking fire everywhere. As his speed, strength, martial arts, and versatility surpassed Ace, all Natsu needed was one good shot, and he made it happen. In the end, Natsu was too hot for Ace to handle. The winner is Natsu Dragneel. I'm Chad, I play Boomstick. I'm Ben, I play Wiz, and stick around, we're about to announce who fights next time. And if you want to watch exclusive commentary on this episode, click that little box, sign up for a first membership trial, it's a great way to support the show.